welcome to Australians Abroad. So what do you love most about Nepal? The people! Yeah, Nepalese people. <laughs> I love Nepal. Nepal is the top of the world, Mount Everest, the mountains. The people, they are very friendly. I love the weather and the temples. They are very nice. There are many tourists in the, from Nepal. Dal <laughs> Pizza. Ah, the traffic is not the best thing in Nepal. <laughs> Nature, culture, the Buddha, and also Hindu, so many religions. Mama. G'day, I'm Kevin. And I'm Matilda, and welcome to Australians Abroad. This is a show where we talk to Aussies living overseas. Yeah, Kevin and I are here to see what they get up to. So, right. let's go. Today we're in Nepal, a small but hugely diverse country sandwiched between the hot plains of India and the Himalayan peaks bordering Tibet and China. It is best known as the roof of the world, home to the legendary Mount Everest, the Himalaya, and eight of the world's ten highest mountains. Nepal is a land of contrasts, of yaks and yetis, monks and monasteries, the birthplace of Buddha, and the bustling streets of Kathmandu. Although one of the poorest countries in the region, Nepal is a rapidly modernising and developing country. With more than 80 ethnic groups and over 200 languages and dialects, its rich diversity is reflected in its kaleidoscope of food, religion and culture. Our first Aussie today is Ben Pickard, a pilot from far north Queensland. Ben works with Air Customunda, a domestic airline. When he's not flying into remote mountain airstrips, Ben is based in Kathmandu. We're all joining for lunch today. So what do, we, what do we have here? It's quite, it's quite the spread. So, uh, well, mostly it's the dal and the bat, the uh, lentil soup and the rice. And then you have the spinach, the curry, uh, some veggies and some chicken. Yeah, right. So and is... momos to top it all off. It's quite, it's quite a piece. Yeah. How's the mutton? <laughs> it's good. Delicious. Oh, the chicken. Good. Local, Very yeah? The local. <laughs> I'm licking my fingers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Finger licking good, it is. It's yeah, very good. just like the colonel. Yeah, just like the colonel. <laughs> yeah, if you want, if you're finished up, let's head back to mine. Have we a could try one. on the balcony. We could try a Nepali beer, I think. Yeah, that's it. I think it would be rude not to. Yeah. So this is, yeah, the humble place. We've got, um, managed to get hot water here through the gas. Yeah. One of the problems in Kathmandu. Yeah. Bathroom there. Yeah, good, old good old earthquake alarm. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> um, come through. It's the dining room. Uh, we got the earthquake kit also. So do you, do you get many earthquakes around here? Yeah, actually, there's a couple. Um, one, one a year usually. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. pretty high risk uh, um, area. Yeah, it's yeah. got the infrastructure of Haiti and the. Yeah, fault line of Japan out in Kathmandu, so. Yeah. But we've got the quit kit and the alarm that I showed you, so. Yeah, ever gone off that alarm? Or... Uh, no, not yet, so. I think they're only right. set for the big ones, yeah? All Touch right, wood, right. yeah? <laughs> anyway, right. jump upstairs, we'll give you a geese. Yeah, managed to get a barbecue all the way from Oz here, so. Right. Makes Good Australia point. Day comfortable. Uh, <laughs> due for a cleaning. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I got the job through a New Zealand friend uh, when we were over there doing some flying. Um, he put me in touch with it and um, I'd worked in far north Queensland probably five years after I'd done my uh, degree in flying, uh, Bachelor of Aviation, and uh, I was ready for a change. Uh, the flying in Nepal is one of the most challenging in the world and, um, and we would, had some good World Food Program and uh, Nepali food contracts. Uh, food corporation contracts. So in the West, the uh, majority of our contracts are through the government, and so we fly a lot of rice and uh, a lot of supplies and passengers. Um, it's one of the most remote parts of Nepal, 
and um, and they are very food insecure because of that. So uh, yeah. we supply most of that. The government hires us for, for an outside and also the UN too. Yeah. Um, in the east we do a bit more of the trekking tourist scene and um, so we're flying trekkers up to Lukla and uh, for their Mount Everest treks and expedition yeah. cargo yeah. and uh, and beer and uh, yeah Red Bull and food again yeah, um, yeah it's a good mix uh, a good mix of flying yeah yeah now you're flying Lukla Look, yeah airport. now I'm based out in the east so out to Lukla um, every day for three four five times a day um, yeah, and that's going to Everest that's, that's yeah it. that's the se second last airport um, in the Everest region um, and the most uh, frequented one of the most busiest airports in this uh, southeast Asian sector almost 60 to 70 flights a day what do you see around when you when you go on so you go out and you go oh uh, yeah we go down into Lukla Valley so we climb up to about 12 Twelve and a half thousand feet, which I think is about three and a half, four, four thousand meters um, height, and then we descend down to uh, Lukla's base is nine thousand three hundred feet. Um, the airport's situated at, but it's quite a high curve. Um, how do I say? Not curve, an incline. Yeah. So it's a good six point nine degree incline on the runway, and uh, which makes it one of. It's very visually impressive to land um, because you land, basically climbing in a climbing nose high attitude and all you can see is the mountain range and uh, the town um, there's not many options so once you're committed to land you're committed to land you can't go anywhere else um, so i've heard that that lukla is supposed to be the most dangerous airport in the world and you you fly <laughs> you fly a couple times every yeah day. yeah they say it is um no it's actually quite a nice airport it does have its um it's paved um it does have its restrictions with the cloud and the weather the well, 11 12 o'clock the wind does pick up and you get a tailwind in the valley also, the cloud and the fog lifting up from the ground reduces the visibility. Um, there were a couple of accidents a couple of years back, um, but now it's much more safer. What makes them difficult, these, these airports? Well, these in, the catch with Nepal is, I guess with flying, is it's not just one thing, it's the combination of factors. So you are in one of the most uh, highest mountain in Australia, I think, is Mount Kosciuszko at eight and a half, nine thousand 9,000 feet. Um, so yeah, coming here and to have 23, 24,000, 29,000 feet peaks, it's, um, and in the valleys, it very, the terrain is very humbling, uh, even it makes you realise how small you are. Yeah. Even though you, you've been blessed and you've been safe for two years, have you had yeah. any, had any tricky situations where you, where you <laughs> felt a bit? Ah, uh, yeah, there's been a couple, like, uh, there's the standard, we've done a lot of test flights to some airports, so, we, I was lucky enough to do for this aircraft, it's a New Zealand made aircraft, um, uh, we've done the test flight for one of the second second highest airport in the world, uh, Sambashe. It's about four or five minutes from Lukla, uh, Namche Bazaar. Flat tyres, uh, bird strikes, uh, hidden birds. There's beautiful uh, vulture hawks that occupy the Himalayan region. Are actually quite feared by most pilots because they're actually bit, they're huge. <laughs> so you get some close calls there dodging them. Um, Ah. Hit one of them before, you hit, you... Ah, yeah, I've hit two before. Um, yeah. Both of them I miss structural damage. So you feel at home here more or less, isn't it? Yeah, I do. It's um, still miss home quite a bit, but um, but yeah, no, it's uh, there's worse places to stay, and um, yeah, it's a lovely, lovely country to stay in. So far. Well, um, usually we get some pretty good views of the Himal, yeah. but um, today it's all clouded up. What do we got here? We have got the local brew. Yeah, local brew. So this is our Everest view. Um, Basically, uh, yeah, uh, so Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norway, and here is Nima Gompu Sherpa, all civilized on. Southern Cross there as well. Yeah, Southern oh, right. Cross. So it's all very nice. They really, um, he was uh, one of the main guys that built uh, Lukla Airport back in the day, and obviously the first, him and uh, Tenzing Norway to scale Everest. Well, I think we've earned this one, so. Definitely. Thank you very much, Ben, for no talking worries, to man. us. And, um, Been a pleasure. Safe flights any time, and hope yeah. to see you too. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to Nepal.
Here we are in the third largest city in Nepal, about 200 kilometers west of Kathmandu. Due to its proximity to the Annapurna mountain range in the Himalaya, Pokhara is a really popular base for trekkers, tourists and outdoor enthusiasts. There's so many things to do here. You can rent a boat like we are at the moment. There's a lot of paragliding which with some fantastic views. Unfortunately, it's a little bit cloudy today. There's so many things to do if you love the outdoors here. I'm off to talk to our second Australians, Matt Gardner and Chantal Pereira from Victoria. Here, this amazing duo run a Royal Enfield touring business, Hearts and Tears. Royal Enfields, what's, what's the charm? Royal Enfields. Why well, are these, not other bikes? Well, it's a long story. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Originally, they're a British sports bike, actually. So really? back in the day, these, these vintage looking antique bikes were one of the fastest bikes in the world. So back in 1949, post-World War II, yeah. the Indian Army actually ordered 800 of these British Enfields <laughs> to India to help mm. patrol the borders. Huh. So this is when India first got the taste of the Enfield. Yeah. And it became a love affair since then. They performed well. Um, they were, became a symbol of national pride, these Enfields. Yeah. Um, so about 50, 1955, um, the production ceased Oh, in okay. um, England, yeah. and full production was uh, in in India oh, wow. from um, Madras Motors. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. in India owned the business. <laughs> yeah. They were very happy to keep this 1955 design in field. <laughs> okay, yeah. So for years and years, for 30 years, they hardly made any improvements or changes to the bike. Wow. So a, a bike bought. This is a 1995 bike. Mm -hmm. If you put this side by side to a 55 <laughs> bike, it would be exactly the same. Wow. If not, probably a bit less in quality. Okay, but uh, I mean the design works then, right? If they haven't changed it? Or? It works. Yeah. Um, production globally declined because they didn't okay. keep up with the Japanese market. Okay. But with the, the, now the modern uh, appeal for vintage bikes, yeah, yeah. infield have seen a resurgence. So okay. after the last five to ten years, mm. you now see infield outlets in Melbourne, yeah. um, in the States, all through Europe. Wow. So production is now increasing. They're no more reliable than they were okay. in 1955. <laughs> okay. No more, f they're not faster than they were in 1955. Yeah. But they got that vintage look. Okie doke. So, motorbike business in Nepal? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty out oh, there, man. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> how, how did you guys end up here? Well, it really wasn't part of our no, that's right. <laughs> game plan at the start, but um, yeah. I guess we kind of just fell into it. I mean, we both came as volunteers originally. I'm an engineer and Chantal, she's a paramedic. So, really, really quite different to motorbikes. <laughs> yeah. um, but I guess once we arrived, the appeal of these old bikes just took over and I guess I was just doing more uh, motorbiking than engineering in the end. So, yeah. <laughs> um, the idea for the business popped up and here we are. Yeah. Fantastic. Mm. Yeah, and I mean, and Shanta, you're a paramedic. I mm. know, oh, yeah. so totally motorbike averse. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm in a motorbike business, but yeah, I know. It's Makes the safety yeah. component quite good. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't have to yeah. be used. Yeah, that's exactly know. right. Yeah. <laughs> Many right. transferable skills. Uh, yeah. I think definitely, um, for instance, us working in development work to begin with mm. and um, just having an opportunity to get to know uh, the Nepali way of life. Mm. build relationships, those sorts of things, those skills are definitely transferable to running a business in the country. Yeah, definitely, mm. definitely. It's really good. And where yeah. are you from in Australia? I'm S from Bendigo, so country Victoria. And yeah. and I'm from Melbourne pretty much, which is two hours from Bendigo. Yeah. yeah. So, mm. oh, it's got, you, you guys met here or, or in Australia or came over together? Or? Well, you'd think living <laughs> only two hours apart on the other side of the world, we would have met back there. But funnily enough, we actually That's met in right. Kathmandu. Really? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Oh, so, goodness. meant to be, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> small world. Yeah, totally. And what's the day to day? I mean, you know, what starts do you with, do? Starts I mean, with coffee. Yeah. <laughs> 6 30. Yeah, 6 30. Right. Then yeah. I trim my moustache. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I did notice the, the uh, tash. Yeah, it's um, mainly for business productivity. <laughs> so, really? we've, That's no, what we've he noticed does uh, anyway. yeah. Yeah. That's a right. huge jump in, especially yeah. female clients, since I've grown the most. So, jump away from the business? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And men alike. Okay, right. Yeah, it's really working well. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, what kind of tours and things do you do? So, the main focus of the business would be package tours. Yeah. So, whether you come for you know one day or up to 10 days. 
Um, we organised the route, the mechanic, tour guide, um, food accommodation. We always try for a unique experience, so the accommodation we choose has to be something special, not just a simple, you know, high or marriage or something like this. There's not that many of them in Nepal anyway. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's always got to have a bit of character to it, and we try to showcase the culture of Nepal. And I think one of the best things um, about our tours, we, we really uh, have the whole gamut of from beginners through to really um, experienced riders. So we um, specialise in instructing people. Um, so take real beginners who have never been on the motorcycle before through to um, then learning on the Enfield and going on a tour. Um, so yeah, we have, have a yeah. great time. We like to think that anybody can come and ride in Nepal, you know. We're a couple of geeks really, <laughs> so we just love motorbikes. And yeah, that's it. Yeah. And many breakdowns? <laughs> Uh, you know, maintenance and everything. I mean, can you get everything in Nepal? Many breakdowns this morning or in general? <laughs> okay. Or... <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, these are a vintage bike, so yeah. they come with their you know, many quirks, but yeah. the reason for hearts and tears is when they do work, of course, there's hearts, <laughs> but more often than not, there is often a problem, so uh, that's where the tears come from. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but it's all part of the parcel. Yeah. yeah. So I know I am a motorbike virgin. Um, how do these babies work? Oh, well, <laughs> this is where I go back to the paperwork and <laughs> leave you with Matt. Yep, yeah. I'll try my and best. So I wish I could say I was just simply turn the key in and press a button and away you go. Mm -hmm. But these are an old bike, so it's a bit more to it than that. All right. Your game? Uh, I guess. All right. Okay, Let's give cool. It a crack. A bad office you got here. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I can't complain. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty good. <laughs> what do you say? You have a beer? Oh yeah, definitely beer o'clock. Let's yeah, go. Let's do it. Do it. <laughs> Our last Aussie is Julia Price from Canberra. Julia is a volunteer. She works in marketing with a micro enterprise NGO based here in Kathmandu. Today, she's going to take me on a little tour of her neighbourhood. So, so what do we have here? Okay, so our landlord here, he loves tigers and he's decorated our entire place with lots of tiger rugs. And so we've nicknamed the house Tiger House. You'll see why good, good. when we go inside. Yeah. Here's an good. example. Here's num tiger number one. <laughs> yeah, you should count them. And tiger number two. <laughs> so this is the living room. Yeah which is also our study, it's where we have guests stay, it's where we sit around and talk after a long day's work. Yeah. Um, we put in the Tibetan flags just to make it feel a little bit more like Nepali home and then mm -hmm. we also have you know, a tribute to our actual home mm -hmm. because we're mm -hmm. four Australians here. Mm -hmm. Shall we yeah. come on through to the kitchen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have a collection of Australian treats to keep us mm. going. I saw this, <laughs> you got industrial grade wheat bix. Yeah, that's huh? right. Delicious and healthy. We got some mint slices. Okay. We got some Tim Tams. Yeah. Some Milo. <laughs> the necessities. <laughs> so this is a sari shop. Okay. So we, I have a wedding to go to, and it's traditional here to wear a pretty sari. And it's a fun excuse to go out into one of these shops and look at all these beautiful materials. And um, I'm going to pick out some materials and you can see how it works. Okay, great, right? great. Well, I'll, I'll take oh, my rightful maybe, place on the, on the chair. Wonderful. And you enjoy. <laughs> can I see these two? Yeah. And this one, yeah. This is all for me. I think this is looking so beautiful. Is it good for to wear to wedding? Yeah. yeah. Maybe, I don't know how to try it. Can you show me how to, to try it?
beautiful yeah. like a model yeah beautiful <laughs> model yeah good good wow good good very long i need to be taller you can do like this as a kid as you can do like this as a person so there's a go it's a sorry oh good good Deva Square. It is one of the three royal uh, sort of areas that of old Kathmandu of the old kingdom. So it's I think maybe it's maybe 13 countries around there, and it's a beautiful old area. Yeah, yeah. It's I think friendly for everyone, including tourists and the locals. They all go. And there's just people walking around everywhere. Yeah. Long guy. Enjoying life. The market stalls. Yeah. So people still live around, live around here as they well. They do, yeah. They, I think we've got some tea. Do you want to try some, some milk tea? Yeah, sounds, yeah. sounds good. That's good, yeah. Is this what you expected from Nepal when you came here? I guess I was really careful to not expect anything when I was coming here because mm -hmm. of the very fact that you just don't know what to expect. You could do all the research you want, but until you actually land here, how, how could you predict it? And mm -hmm. I didn't want to be disappointed or anything like that. So. Okay. I came here with an open mind and I've been pleasantly surprised by everything that i found. Yeah. Tell us more about just your daily life here, so are you... Yeah. Um, what do you get up to? Well, I live with three other Australians and we're all here on a volunteer basis. Um, so my days when I'm not working with uh, my organisation is spent socialising with them, which is fantastic because they've become like a little family um, here because we're so far from home that you just sort of make the family, make your family those who are around you. Yeah. Everything, everything's so crazy and I love it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. crazy right. and colourful. Yeah, yeah. I think um, it'll be interesting to see in the next little while how the country develops. It's very much a developing place and it, you can see it in Kathmandu but you can see it also outside of the Kathmandu Valley. Um, there are so many things that can be improved and, and I can't wait to see what the changes will be in the future. This is called lapsi. It's a really sour fruit, but I'm yeah. not sure what this one is. I think we should try it. Okay. Do we uh, try? Okay. Ready? Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Need to wash again. One percent is sour. Mmm. It's good. Mmm. Chunam ke ho? Amala. Amala. Amala, it's called Amala. <laughs> Vitamin C, oil. Oh. Yeah. Okay, then. Okay.